Hi guys, welcome back to this van conversion. So now with the roof rails um, bolted and waterproofed, so they're not moving, we are about ready to start uh, putting the insulation on the ceiling. So we cut this PIR board when we were doing the wall PIR insulation and we um, approximately did cut the sizes of, of, for the roof as well because it just made sense and today's task is just to fit these somehow on the roof. Now we have stick pins so we, we're going to attempt that first but nothing is straight in the van. You know the floor is like the flattest straightest thing in the van you'll find. The roof is like the second straightest. But even with that I'm going to have to chisel some of the edges because as the ceiling meets the wall it curves a lot and there's the bolts from the mounting mounting rack that I have to account for and these have been cut pretty much exactly to size and that would just not fit. Alrighty then, so from our dry fit session we found that one of the easiest ways to begin overcoming the curvature of the roof is to actually chop up the PIR board small. So as you can see we have some big ones there the full width of the van these ones and although they fit they do stick out more beyond the ribs than uh, we were planning for because what we're looking for is so we want to put the insulation then we need to have a bit of an air gap for the reflectics to, to do their job and then the cladding if the PIR board goes below its five and a half centimeter um, height allotment then that sort of uh, brings the roof down uh, more on us now I'm short that's fine but we're raising the floor a little bit and if we start bringing the roof down as well <laughs> um, Sam is basically not gonna have a, a space to stand up although he does seem pretty short sometimes but he's not that short so we're gonna start with section grape because it has been chopped up into four pieces already so as you see this one sticks down a little bit more than we fancy but it's not too bad but that is uh, but it sticks down because you see these so that is another like five mil down which gives you the extra distance here so ideally what we should do hold on, we should chisel out this corner so it goes with the groove of the rib and now give it a little bit more leeway obviously the bolt in the way let me see how much in the way they are the first thing we need to do is accommodate for this curve a little bit and then probably just cut some gaps with these bolts i mean if i press on this okay so can we see that right so i pressed on it and that marks me where the holes are where the bolts will fall so i do have the option to basically create holes here and let them poke through so it doesn't so I don't have to get rid of all of the insulation here but I don't know how much I need to chamfer so I'm gonna have to uh, do trial and error much better that worked better than I thought for a first dry fit after carving. That's about the five mil I was expecting. the roof like that I have my fingers worth of space here so that's that's good so that that this would be all reflectix and then that would act as the air gap oh arms all right so picking where the stick pins go you have to be a bit you know strategic about it because obviously you don't want it to be in the holes because that's not enough adhesive attachment and you also don't want to stick it on the sound deadening either okay get your mark as to where the board ends. So on this one, obviously we have space here and then we have some space here. So let's go with those. Okay, this is tricky because I need this to come out like flat but then I need to get my bearings to hit them. When I do that, that bends the stick a bit. I think that's generally correct 
in. That, okay. That. But that last time dislodged the plate. See, that's not holding it up properly. No, that's holding it. It's just the plate's a bit loose. There's no way you can bend that one over. You're just going to ruin the insulation. Did it work? Well, I mean, it cut off the end. That's still sharp, though. Yeah. We can't grind it all the way back, otherwise it won't hold it in the plate. Maybe two weeks since I started this video. I don't remember anything. The shower's up, ish, you know, you've already seen that video. And these bloody things just keep falling on our head. So some of you have suggested in our previous videos that uh, we have potentially gotten a bad batch of stick pins. I think you're probably right. I'm pretty sure that there's decent stick pins out there with decent adhesive that are not gonna fall down as soon as the, the roof gets boiling hot. But that's that, we have them. So. Before we go ahead and uh, uh, splurge on more stick pins that may or may not work, the first thing we did was we tried to use some glazing sealant. Glazing sealant because it grips really fast, not because it's appropriate for this, for, for this job, and it did sort of work. However, so this one, so what we did was we put the glazing sealant on the back of the stick pins, because these stick pins were already skewered onto the insulation, but because obviously we only have two stick pins, they're still a bit of a jiggle in it. So in terms of longevity for the stick pins that we managed to get, it doesn't seem like a long-term solution because imagine we put the cladding up, it's just like, oh, the insulation is done, yay, you know, we put the cladding on and suddenly, you know, this insulation just falls into our cladding and starts going all over the place. So we need to make sure that these are nicely secured the same way the wall insulation is. Even if they stick, we don't want them moving around because all the motion and stuff is gonna just make it make everything so squeaky and you, you don't want that and then we have our next exhibit which is this corner piece only one is holding up even though all of them uh, have glazing snow in the back part of the reason why it hasn't stuck is because I had to hold them up like so and within 30 seconds my eyes were tearing up uh, so this will have to come down so Look, the glazing sealer has stuck so well. So these ones, I did not press long enough. So if I had pressed long enough, they would have uh, been okay, I think. Yeah. This one had stuck relatively well, although I still managed to pull it because it was just stuck on this. Well, that's the one that was actually holding it up, right? Yeah, that was the one ho holding it up. So in terms of strength, because this is light, I don't think it would have been a problem if all of them had stuck. But because I had to pull it off, it just shows you how much weight this sort of use of the sealant actually um, provides. So before we go ahead and buy more stick pins uh, that may or may not work, as I said, we're going to try and stick the insulation up with Velcro. We might double up uh, with stick pins or something like that. We're going to test it. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and see what, what in the world we're trying to cook up. In order to get a good connection, we're just going to sand the area where the stick pins are going to come in contact with, along with the Velcro and give it a clean with some alcohol so that it sticks better we hope here's your grape grape so since these ones we were using as our tester pieces and they already have stick pins in them with plates on the other side we don't really want to waste the limited amount of stick pins we have so we're going to put sealant on the stick pin sticky pad bit and then we're also going to put velcro on the roof and use both of them together push it up the Velcro should stick and the sealant should also stick and dry. The Velcro should hold in. And you push and you hope that you don't pop the roof sealant off. Oh, that doesn't land on your head. So the Velcro holds this piece up tight to the, to the roof so the black glazing sealant actually cures. I mean, it's definitely way more secure than it was with just the stick pins. With the Velcro and the stick pins, I mean, there is a little bit of flex, but obviously the roof flex as well, because we're pushing up against the roof. They are pretty secure in. 
So we've stuck the first two sections in, and apart from a few pieces of wood holding it up, they seem to be sticking all right. So we're going to continue and do the rest of the van. We can't do this section because we're installing something in this cavity, which you will see later. So we can't stick it here yet. And uh, also with this one, since we need to remove the wall at some point to glue it into the floor and attach it to the ceiling somehow, that piece, although it fits, we're just going to leave it loose. We're going to stick the other three though and continue down the van. Remember the stick pin comes through the other side. Into your finger. Preferably not into your finger. This is the skylight that we're DIYing. It's uh, in progress, but this is going to go on the roof so we know exactly where it's going to come through on the inside. So we can use this as a frame and stick the insulation in around. So if I grab the Sharpie, so let's assume that thing is now going to go beyond that line. Yeah. The wood, meaning not the... Yeah, because right. we know that the outer of this frame will be the frame for the wood on the inside, just like how we did the max All right. Anything on the floor? Shouldn't be. Um, hold on. Four, eight. Those are up. Skylights there. I think they've all stayed. In the rip, they've all stayed. Yeah. Let's go jiggle them. Oh, that was down a little bit more. A little bit, but no, that's in. Yeah. Do that corner. That's pretty well in. Okay, that's good. I mean, if anything needs to be propped up exactly in this section, you have the skylight, so yeah. we can uh, play around with the frame. But it doesn't seem to be... Uh... I mean, the other side's just as, just as bouncy. Yeah. That corner... Oh, actually, it's not too bad. What about the concerning one at the front? Um. There's wood here. Which is now not here. That didn't seem to fall down this time. I mean, it's definitely more flexible than the others, which I was expecting anyway, mm -hmm. see? Yeah, I see it. But... Mm. But it's pretty well hidden. And it's not falling. Well, well the sealant's definitely had time to stick, so the sealant is dry by yeah. now. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned about um, how they're going to handle over time with the motion of the van. Yeah. So I am thinking about maybe using some expanding foam to just wedge them really well. Yeah, I think some expanding foam possibly in these crevices I here. I mean, we don't have that big of a gap anywhere, but I mean, yeah. it's <laughs> although I'm happy it's up and that it's ready to be sturdy, like, well, what if it starts squeaking at some point? Then we'll have to yeah. remove the cladding. Well, the thing is, I think the expanding foam will be good for two things. It will be good for just filling the final few gaps so we've got a better insulation barrier, but also to stick it in place because the insulation the expanding foam is quite sticky. So that should kind of hold it in place. If there's any other ways maybe that you can think of uh, how to stick these up better, if you don't think these are supported enough, expanding foam or whatever, just let us know down in the comments below. But yeah. Ceiling insulation is up and it's not clogging our garage anymore. Well, I mean, most of it's up. But they will be up very soon. <laughs>